Good. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for having me here today. It's really my pleasure to be uh, to have the opportunity to talk to you today about the accessible air transport and uh, challenges and opportunities ahead of us to make this happen. I have to say that when starting uh, to plan uh, this keynote address, I took some time to consider in what way I could share with you a message that will speak for the aviation industry and for the disability community alike. Making air travel accessible to passengers with disabilities and older people is ultimately being inclusive. That's why you see the, the title of my presentation today. It is about enabling everyone to enjoy the freedom that travel offers. We always say that we are the business of freedom, so we want to offer freedom to everyone. But why this is important for the aviation industry? It is not just because this is the right thing to do. It is also because it makes business sense. If you look at this slide, over one billion people globally experience disability. And IATA headline members have an inherent motivation to ensure all people with accessibility need have a positive experience when traveling by air. These persons are customers, and we need to take care of our customers. So if they don't have a positive experience, they won't stay customers for long. But there, also, there is also regulatory motivation. For example, if people with accessibility needs are not treated fairly and with dignity, regulators are going to regulate against us. So at least we have three motivations here. It's dignity, it's safety as well, it's business, and it's also regulation. I will cover all three, the three topics um, as we proceed with the presentation. Today I want to focus with specific, um, these three specific topics. And as I mentioned before, the basic facts is that Persons with disability represent over a billion people, and this is the 15% of the population. This actually is the estimation that world, the World Health Organization did in 2011. So we estimate that more people today have more disability needs, and the reason is also because the population is aging. It's also because there is rapid spread of chronic diseases, and as well as the methodologies that are used to measure the disability. That includes now dementia, uh, autism, and aging population, as I already mentioned. Not all uh, disabilities are visible. Actually, the 70% 70% of those disabilities are invisible. And in addition, if we look uh, at the future population demography, we also realize that we are in the era of longevity revolution. The new boomers, the passengers, the people that are growing old and they will travel. And they want to travel. They want to have the freedom to travel and those to be assisted. But what is the need? What is needed to make sure that the airlines and the industry as a whole is able, is able to provide a safe and dignified travel to those passengers. We ask the community this question and we ask them to support us. They answered that we need, in aviation, we need consistency of application of policy, so of regulations. We need aviation standards applied universally and a coherent assistance process. And I would add as well, consistent trainings to the ground 
and to the onboard staff. Then, if we look at the international policy scenario, we see that we have a few main instruments. First of all, we have the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities Traveling by Air that was adopted in 2006. This is the most ratified convention of all times, and actually it has been today ratified by 177 states. Why I'm saying this is because those states are cascading this convention into national regulation. And this is the result. When we go to the United Nations, the International Civil Aviation Organization, they as well have standards and recommended practices into the ICAO Annex 9 to the Chicago Convention related to the facilitation of transport by air for persons with disabilities. And also IATA has some rules. We have standards, we have the Resolution 700, but mostly in 2019, our members approved unanimously a, a resolution uh, at the annual general meeting which reaffirmed the commitment of the IATA's member airlines to provide safe, reliable, and dignified travel for persons with disabilities. This resolution also contained a set of guiding principles that we are asking government to follow when developing their accessibility policies to make sure that passengers and airlines are not confused when traveling between different regulations. At the center of the IATA AGM resolution, there was the disability, there was one, the main disability principle that is nothing for us without us. That's why we are putting the persons, we are putting the disability community at the very center of what we do. And at every stage of the airline's accessibility policy and resolutions, the disability community is listened to, and their recommendations are put into practice. This is actually an issue where you have to be constantly listening to passengers, or we won't really meet their needs. We always say, if we don't ask them what they need, how we are going to be sure that we are doing what they need, that we are assisting them with safety and with dignity. But when we go to regulations, well, this is not the reality. One of the biggest challenges for persons with disabilities and also for the aviation industry, mostly for the airlines, when traveling between different jurisdictions, is the patchwork of regulations. The reason is that today each government affords this issue differently, resulting in an overlapping and conflicting regulations that serves neither the disabled passengers nor the airline interests. Who knows a bit about accessibility, knows the issues that uh, the aviation industry had with the uh, unfortunate case of emotional support animals, where basically we were transporting any kind of animals on board of the aircraft. And this has not been settled because there is no definition today, not only of disability, but also there is no definition of, for example, assistance dogs, with the fact that different uh, airlines and different states adopt different regulations on this case, and this results in operational consequences for our members. But also, for example, for the application of the assistance in case of, uh, um, of invisible disabilities, there are no requirements in that sense and the passengers still today, there is some stigma. They are not going to declare themselves that they need assistance or the reason why they need assistance. And the result is, I'm sure that everyone has experienced this at the airport, the result is that we take every passenger and we sit on a wheelchair. Every passenger that needs assistance, we put him on a wheelchair. And this is not the way to provide them dignified support and dignified assistance. 
So as a result of all these different regulations, passengers with a disability may find that their needs are accommodated differently, depending on where they travel. We as IATA continue to urge governments to recognize that commercial aviation and the passengers it serves rely on coordination between states. This is very important. Not only we have to talk to the passengers, states, they have to talk between themselves. This is not sustainable in the long term for the business and it's not sustainable for the passengers neither. So policymakers must understand that a, go a global approach results in more effective legislation which can be more easily implemented in practice and which would serve passengers better. Those passengers are citizens. It's important for them as well. Our priority, of course, is to maintain an open dialogue with both policymakers and the disability community. So this is what we have today. This is just an example of, there are at least 76 different regulations all over the world that talk about the rights of passengers with disabilities when traveling by air. And none of them are coordinated. So let's go on COVID and accessibility. Of course, everybody has said that COVID, and it's true, had a devastating impact on airlines. But when we go to the airlines, airlines have never diminished their commitment to supporting passengers with disabilities. Actually, in the aim of building back better, IATA and our members, we have, over this past year and a half, moved ahead with the number of tra air travel accessibility initiatives. Here you have a few of those. So, for example, we joined up with many uh, disability associations, but also the reason is because passengers with disabilities, they were still traveling. There are some statistics out there that we run with the, the disability community that actually where it was possible, even internally, or where it was possible between different states, those passengers were continuing traveling. So we, uh, I said that we, uh, we joined up with a disability organization. They conducted the test, to, um, a survey, to test the confidence of passengers to restart travel once the health situation allowed. Um, many passengers stated they need more information from airlines. As I said before, greater harmonization of biosafety measures and a better communication all round. There were concerns when uh, they were physically lifted. Uh, passengers who have a physical disability, they are lifted to be moved from the, the wheelchair to the seat. And of course, that was a concern. But one, one of the main concerns was um, uh, in regards of passengers who had difficulties of breathing. Some of them, uh, even for us, it's very difficult to wear the mask all over the time. But some of those passengers, especially with specific uh, situations, um, they have difficulties of breathing with a mask, and they are worried about imposed regulatory requirements for passengers to wear a mask on board. So what we did, we worked with, state, uh, with some of, of the um, uh, most advanced states, and uh, we were, uh, we teamed up with uh, the Accessibility Working Group, that is a, a working group within IATA and the disability community. And we developed guidance for the airline industry to adopt when assisting those passengers. So basically passengers who have difficulties to breathe, if regulation allows, there are procedures for the airlines to allow them to be isolated and to be taken care. Isolated in the sense where the, it is possible on board to be, to be comfortable without using the mask. And there are also standards on that. We have updated our standards. These are other initiatives that we have taken during the, the COVID situation. 
For example, um, one of the initiatives that we have in IATA, and this is the first of its kind, um, we have the Accessibility Symposium. It is a way of putting together the disability community, the airlines, the airports, the state regulators, and also the other stakeholders of the, um, of the chain. So uh, the Accessibility Symposium last year was a, was a record. We, we did online, of course, but was participated around, uh, from around 400 online uh, participants and 31 speakers uh, were, were supporting us as well. And finally, as we are looking at technology, one of the things uh, uh, just before the, the world was locked down, we ran, we ran an air hackathon on mobility aids. And this brings me to the other issue, to one of the first priorities that we have um, in um, one of the priorities that we have in IATA. That is the damage of mobility aids. That is actually an important topic for the industry, and we are going to address it. Mobility aids are wheelchairs, basically, and scooters. Damage for the passengers can be very painful. Um, as always, this mobility aid and wheelchairs are considered as an extension of the body of the passenger and that is essential for their autonomy. So we already have standards for the battery-powered mobility aids, but we thought that we needed to go over and beyond those standards. So we are launching an action group, a mobility aid action group, that will be kicked off next month, beginning of next month. And this action group will be comprised of a global network of uh, uh, experts from across the travel chain. So it means not only the airlines, but the airports, but also the mobility aids manufacturers. And we, we will take on board the recommendations of the, um, we will take on board some regulations as well, and some recommendations of the, um, uh, the passengers. And we will look at the safe loading and securing on the belly of the aircraft of the mobility aid. This almost concludes my presentation, but I want to, to leave you with, um, with a message. We think that an inclusive, compassionate and balanced culture is to run through the entire industry and be at the forefront of, uh, of our future policy initiatives. We cannot be compassionate, we cannot work for the freedom of the passengers if we don't look at all passengers. IATA and its members recognize that more must be done to make our business fully inclusive and accessible. It's a must, it's the future. There will be many more people traveling by air. Many of those are not traveling today because they are not assisted. We have to do, we have to work for them and with them. At the same time, we cannot do this alone. We will have to continue working with governments, airports, the disability community and other stakeholders to realize the vision of the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities and the people through our, our industry that continue to support this endeavor. This concludes my presentation for today. Thank you very much for listening, and I hope to have other occasions. Thank you.